Welcome to the Worth the Fight podcast, where we bring you powerful conversations surrounding the sensible and therapeutic use of psychedelics and plant medicines towards healing trauma. I'll introduce you to guests who, through their own personal journey and transformation, tell the Worth the Fight story. I'm your host, Matt Simpson, author of Worth the Fight, Acting for a Better World, a guide to spirituality, psychedelic medicines, and overcoming trauma. Thank you for listening. Hello, everyone. Happy Thank You Plant Medicines Day. I think today is a, um, might be the beginning of, of something special. Uh, it is a, uh, there's a movement, uh, the Thank You Plant Medicines movement, which is to encourage people to share openly uh, and honestly about their uh, positive experiences with plant medicines and uh, with hopes of destigmatizing the uh, erroneous programming around these misunderstood plant medicines and psychedelic medicines. And, um, you know, there's, there's a hope that if, if enough of us uh, speak out and, and share our truth, that, that we can open the door for uh, or subtly invite people that are hurting, stuck in trauma, to potentially investigate these uh, medicines for their own personal healing journeys. Yeah, it's a really, really exciting time. And, uh, you know, this is the Worth the Fight podcast, episode number 20. This is the first solo episode that I've done. Um, we did flip the tables in episode number nine, where uh, Kelly Tennant interviewed me. And um, but this will be a little bit of a, a different format here. I wanted to share my personal experiences, a little bit more about me and uh, my personal experiences with, um, with these plant medicines. And uh, then we can do a little recap of the first 20 episodes and, and, and where uh, we're at and where we intend on taking this uh, podcast. Uh, I have so much gratitude and love in my heart for all of y'all and the support um, of this creative project and endeavor. I started this back in September and uh, my friend Nick had encouraged me or challenged me or dared me to do to do five episodes and and record a couple conversations and and see see how this goes see if this is something worth exploring and uh, here we are with episode number twenty and uh, it's been uh, an absolute labor of love uh, you know very challenging project but uh, definitely worthwhile and I've I've really enjoyed you know putting out these high vibe um, conversations out into the world. And it's been uh, a deep, deep honor to interview the, the quality of guests so far and uh, to, to, to be getting the support, the early support that I didn't envision. And um, yeah, it's been an absolute labor of love. And, and again, so much gratitude for, for all of y'all and um, our, glow, our growing uh, audience here at the Worth the Fight podcast. So it is Thank You Plant Medicines Day, and uh, I gotta gotta thank the plant medicines. Jeez, I've had had such tremendous experiences with these um, misunderstood medicines. I, I essentially came on this path uh, back in. I remember the day. It was September fourth, two thousand thirteen. I was out uh, with a few friends of mine. We were out on the water in Chicago. And, um, I had a handful of mushrooms and I was with some friends and I felt, I felt safe. It was the first time that I'd ever had a peak psychedelic experience uh, or that I had taken, I might've taken some, um, at a concert a few weeks earlier. And, but this was the first time that I, I felt safe with, um, you know, taking, more than more than usual, I'd smoked a little bit of, uh, of of marijuana, a little bit of cannabis in my twenties and in early thirties, and it was just always something that that um, kind of took the edge off, but gave me kind of gave me a sense of paranoia, and it, it it never really resonated with me, even when I had a lot of friends of mine that were smoking, and um, it just wasn't really my thing, and I'd always feared psychedelics in my twenties. And, um, when I was around them a lot, uh, it was, you know, during my college years and, you know, roommates and doing ecstasy and mushrooms and, 
and it just wasn't, it really wasn't my thing. Um, I had a uh, kind of an episode with uh, eating too many pot brownies and uh, that's, that was a uh, big slap in the face and it kind of scared me off uh, perhaps to engage you know, ecstasy or, or um, MDMA or, or magic mushrooms or any of the other ones that were around and, um, you know, or just, just didn't feel safe um, at that time to, to do. And I was a, a big time hard charger in corporate America and, a, you know, go, 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 go. And, and uh, I think that I smelled anything that could potentially get in the way of, of my pursuit of the almighty dollar uh, was something that that um, I didn't really feel comfortable with uh, engaging. Until that experience, I guess uh, I've digressed here, but we'll get back to you know, that, that experience that I had uh, on September 4th, uh, 2013. It was a really profound experience of, of having a handful of, of mushrooms. And uh, I remember that day, it was a, I think it was a holiday. It was, it was um, Labor Day. And I had had, I probably had, this is going to sound a little bit bizarre, but, uh, you know, that was when I was a big drinker too. That was, I probably had 15 beers that day. It was, we were out on the water and that was just, that was a typical day, um, in the past. And, um, but there was this, this medicine or these mushrooms were going to get through to me no matter what that day. Um, and, and I remember having such a profound, expansive uh, experience feeling as if there was an extension cord coming out of my side and plugged right into the universe, right into the earth. And, um, it was, it was funny. Uh, you know, my friend, uh, T who had the same amount, uh, that day he was obsessively cleaning his fridge. So, uh, you know, it just goes to show the, how these medicines affect us all differently and, um, but I was in a position in, in, I was at a time in my life where I was looking for this, um, kind of awakening or, um, you know, I'd always been seeking and then to have and, and, and find so much clarity. And this just, it was a, it was a profound mystical experience that came out of the middle of nowhere, but it was so profoundly just that it, it didn't concern me, uh, one bit. And uh, from that, that point on, I'd deepened my meditation practice and you know, probably had a, another half dozen or a dozen um, experiences, similar experiences to, to that particular one, uh, recreationally out with friends and at, at concerts. And that was the big thing I got into, uh, or before I had a profound healing experience that I write about in my book, uh, Worth the Fight. The um, that ex- experience that I open up the book with, and and uh, you know going down to uh, Costa Rica, and um, after I had done some research and found out that there was that there was stronger psychedelics than 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 mushrooms. I mean, all of this was was so new, and and uh, we're in this time of prohibition where there's not uh, readily information out available. So uh, you know discovering this and, and, um, doing my research and finding out that there's people that were healing from depression, people that were healing from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, people that were healing from childhood sexual trauma, people that were healing from anxiety and addiction. And, um, you know, I remember I had one week off. I just sold my business a few months earlier and, uh, really freeing up a lot of energy and, and time and resources and, and, um, you know, putting me in a position where I could, I could dream and I could think big and I could think about uh, potential changes in my life. And I had one week before I was going to get so sucked into corporate America and the rat race that, that I would have been just drowning with responsibility and accountability and, and, um, you know, all of these kind of golden handcuffs is what we call them, uh, to, to keep me tethered to, to work. And so I had that experience with ayahuasca, a very eye-opening experience, and that was uh, late December 2014, early 2015. And uh, subsequently, I came back from that with my, you know, eyes wide open, and and um, you know, it with a a very um, sobering reality of of what I needed to do to to create the the life that I'm living now. And, uh, so I, I, I revere, uh, both of those, um, 
those plant medicines for, for really helping me get out of my own way and, and to uh, allow for some of these insights and, and creative uh, thought, thought uh, processes to come forward. And um, ultimately, after that experience uh, with, with ayahuasca, I, I, it was 2015, if we're going in a kind of a chronological order, I had just had that profound healing in, in Central America. And uh, in, in 2015 and 2016, there was, I don't know, maybe six to eight, nine um, solo journeys I had with psilocybin and, um, and cannabis as well, the, those two. And uh, I would turn my phone off and um, just go within and really powerful meditative experiences that I uh, attribute and credit to shedding my depression that I had. And uh, there was a time after those said six to eight, nine therapeutic sessions where I just didn't really crave that medicine anymore. And, and, uh, and I felt like my regiment was done. I had seen and, and read about Amber Lyons. She's a former CNN reporter, I believe, who started a, um, a big, uh, psychedelic, um, information outline, uh, media company even that reset me. And, um, her, her shares were really, really hit me. And, uh, you know, I, I, I ended up kind of modeling, um, her, her experiences and, uh, had some more ayahuasca journeys in, in 2015, 16 and 17. And, and, um, there was another medicine that I came across, uh, after I had kind of set out on my world travels, I, I traveled with a backpack for 18 months and came across this, um, the, the cactus, uh, San Pedro, which, um, is native to Peru. The, both ayahuasca and San, San Pedro are, uh, psychedelic healing medicines that are native to Peru. Peru is a very, very special country that, that, um, has these, um, these healing rituals are very much a part of their culture. And, and, uh, I had, uh, the privilege of going to, uh, Cusco and, uh, to Iquitos to engage, uh, San Pedro and, uh, very, very powerful, uh, plant medicine, uh, a little bit less harsh than ayahuasca, you know, long, long journey, a little bit more in, in your body. And I remember, you know, feeling, feeling surges of, of energy and, and, um, yeah, yeah, uh, beautiful, beautiful medicine, and um, that there's there's so much wisdom that can be imparted uh, from from really all of these, and and uh, you know the I think that everything has a everything has a spirit, and I use that word spirit uh, synonymously with uh, impression. Everything that uh, everything has an impression. Everything has a spirit. And, uh, these, all of these medicines, all these plant medicines give off a certain, uh, spirit or impression. And if we're looking at it from a scientific standpoint, uh, we might be talking about, uh, compounds, uh, so molecular compounds that, you know, that these certain, uh, uh plant medicines might, um, elicit, uh, for example, ayahuasca. I think that that was the first time that I experienced a, a flow state, and a flow state is said to have uh, to be a combination of the the neurochemicals, the five or six neurochemicals. Let's see if I, I'll get this right here: the uh, norepinephrine, adrenaline, dopamine, uh, anandamide, cortisol, and um, there might be another one there that I I, I missed, but you get this this full cocktail of, of, of brain neurochemicals coming all online at the same time. Very, very profound. Uh, you know, ayahuasca is a visionary medicine. So it, it, um, it, it, it's, it's not like a fortune teller vision, but it's a, um, it allows us to see in a probabilistic manner. If I do this, uh, this, this is likely to happen. If I do this, 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 and that, I can expect to see this or that and so on. And, um, yeah, it really, uh, opens up your mind, opens up your imagination. Other medicines that I've come across on my path, tobacco, uh, not the, 
uh, camel cigarettes or, or menthol cigarettes. Um, we, we butcher, well, we butcher most things here in the West, uh, and certainly that of tobacco. Ceremonial use tobacco, um, there's a powder from Central America that I've, or South America that I've grown very fond of. It's called the rape or snuff. And uh, it's, a, it's a powerful plant medicine that, that gives a sense of uh, purification and, uh, you know, is very, uh, is, is helped to deepen meditations that I've had. And uh, it's, a, it's a very reliable plant medicine. Um, one of my favorites is uh, cacao, raw organic cacao that uh, after, after all of these profound psychedelic healing experiences, chocolate, you know, sure enough, is, is one of my, my favorite, most impactful uh, plant medicines and that I've used to write my book and I've used as a, as a creative tool to, um, to really think. It, it has anandamide in it, so it promotes lateral thinking, kind of outside-the-box thinking. Uh, anandamide is also a thought to be the neuro uh, transmitter that comes online when we when we get a runner's high and um so so yeah it's a very very beautiful um plant medicine that it opens up my heart and i get really uh cheesy and just feel like i'm having you know romance with with everything that is when i when i drink cacao and um one of my uh, most go-to plant medicines that i revere so deeply a cousin to cacao is, is, uh, coffee. And, uh, you know, that's the, I think the biggest drug on earth is, or the most commonly, uh, consumed. And, um, you know, to use that in a intentional manner has been such a blessing uh, to me and my, my path. And it just, you know, similar to cacao, it opens up uh, creative thought and, uh, it definitely gives off that that get shit done uh, spirit of of uh, productivity and focus. And uh, in addition to coffee, you know the different teas, green tea, black tea, have also been uh, been very very special. And matcha tea is a, is it's kind of a trendy something that we've been you know you see a little bit more here and there. And and matcha for I believe for. Um, for for millennia has been used in in um, sacred uh, ceremonies in in China uh, by the uh, by the elite and to think that you can go to Whole Foods and and pick up you know twenty to thirty servings of it for for fifteen dollars is um, is really a, a function of the times that we're in and and how we have all of these incredible tools um, that, that are here. I believe these tools are here to uh, help us level up our game so we can um, love more deeply ourselves, each other, and the natural world. So we're here at episode number 20. And uh, again, I want to give so much uh, gratitude and appreciation for for all of you who have, who have listened and um, you know, this has been uh, an absolute labor of love to think that, uh, you know, that I've had the opportunity to interview a few of my heroes. Some highlights thus far, uh, having uh, Rick Doblin, a PhD, on the show for episode number 10. And, um, you know, Rick Doblin is doing extraordinary work, pioneering work at the Multidisciplinary Association of Psychedelic Studies. And, um, you know, he's the one that is driving really the, the godfather of the psychedelics as medicine movement, who's driving forward this vital work that's being done with MDMA assisted psychotherapy. And it was an absolute high honor to have him on the show. And, and, um, we talked about where this movement is heading and, uh, what to expect in the next decade, uh, and beyond. And, um, number 15, was was um, was really a great privilege as well having Stephen Kotler on the show. Stephen Kotler is the author of of uh, the Rise of Superman and one of my most revered books, uh, probably the most important book t- to me on this um, on this psychedelic path or medicine path um, that has helped me understand 
in such a profound manner, my own healing is, is the book uh, Stealing Fire. And um, highly recommended to any of y'all that are, are looking to to further wrap your hands around these these um, misunderstood psychedelic medicines and and really altered states in general. And and um, you know they they mapped in that book both Jamie Wheel and Stephen Kotler, they're the co-authors. They mapped uh, how these psychedelic uh, medicines or altered states of consciousness. Um, are, are, are such a big part of the human experience and the human condition. And they're happening all over the world. And there's so many different ways that uh, individuals and cultures are engaging these altered states of consciousness. And um, yeah, it really helped me kind of check myself in, in regards to uh, some of the, the righteousness of of uh, my path is the way and, and this is the right way and, and to really check myself that there is no right way. And uh, as Stephen Kotler says, there's you know living aligned with our biology and there's living out of alignment with our biology. I think that we, we covered that in, in episode number 15. But um, yeah, this is, has been a, um, a big honor to be in this position to to share uh, these um, these stories of of overcoming and uh, these these um, you know with earnest hopes of of uh, redefining or helping to retell the story around psychedelic medicines around trauma and uh, we cover the um, veteran uh, collective soul healing mission in in episodes number three and sixteen with two respective organizations in, in uh, Worth the Fight podcast episode number three. I interviewed uh, Jesse Gould of the Heroic Hearts Project. And in episode number 16, I interviewed Amber and Marcus Capone of Veterans Exploring Treatment Solutions. Um, all three of them are doing extraordinary work for our human family. They're setting up and organizing um, psychedelic or entheogenic a fancy word for plant medicines um, that means uh, awaking the divine uh, from within, but they're setting up these uh, therapeutic sessions for our war veterans that are amid a mental health crisis and suicide epidemic. So um, for those of you that, that have read Worth the Fight, um, you know that I have a soft heart for our war veterans. And, um, you know, I truly believe that if we if we seek a peaceful planet in this lifetime, hey guys, you know, we got to, we got to heal our warriors. They can teach us all of these powerful and provocative lessons that we ignore as a, as a people. And, um, you know, we, we hit on that pretty solid in, in episode number 19, the, um, the idea that this unchecked systematic child sex abuse that the church uh, perpetuates uh, that the Catholic Church specifically perpetuates is uh, what I believe to be uh, at root for a uh, high majority of the war and conflict we see here on earth. And I could dive in deeper to that, but I will let y'all go back to uh, episode number 19 to um, investigate that bold assertion. And um, yeah, so this, um, you know... The, the podcast episodes with, uh, with Jesse Gould and Marcus and Amber Capone, highly recommended. Um, they're, they're doing incredible work. And if, if you're looking for a way to be of service uh, for nonprofits to help that are doing uh, extraordinary exponential work, and when I say exponential, this is what I mean, is that uh, when we're healing our warriors, um, I think uh, Amber said it, she said it best, um, that that um, our veterans that are, have returned from Iraq and Afghanistan, that they are uh, waking up to the realization that they are approaching their most important mission yet, and that is to safely uh, bring these medicines into our culture, into our society, and to show how it's done, to heal, to get right, to share these blessings and to share these um, powerful insights and walk this path with integrity. Uh, our, our war veterans are very trusted here in the U.S. We revere our military. And um, when a war veteran raises his hand, us civilians, we shut up. We shut up and we listen. 
and uh, we, we give give them the respect that they deserve, and um, let them let them talk, let them preach, let them let them share, and that's a big part of uh, the collective healing that we envision with these these medicines, um, and and the opportunity of uh, bringing people together. This is a all of this is about love, and and um, you know healing our war veterans that are amid a mental health crisis and suicide epidemic is a love-based solution that nearly all of us agree on. Whether you're on the left or you're on the right, this definitely transcends that. And um, that idea of uh, right or wrong, and um, this it just is, you know, this is, this is love and, and um, you know, doing what's right for those that are hurting and struggling. And what I've seen with my own eyes and the experiences and, and the anecdotal stories that I've come across is, um, and, and as we continue to break down the stigma around these misunderstood medicines, we're going to see can, time and time again, incredible transformations of people healing, getting right, engaging, um, whatever it is they're here to do, whatever the work they're here to do and, um, to find their calling and to dig in, grab a shovel and, and get to work. Uh, I believe that we're on the clock uh, with the, I believe we're all on the clock with the climate crisis. And, um, you know, when I say that this is an exponential strategy, that the idea that we can heal people, our war veterans, that no discipline, that, that, that no leadership, that have, have uh, gone through um, a, a tremendous ordeal, um, a, a living hell, if we can get them to heal and to get right, they can teach us the realities of war. So maybe someday we, we will have a peaceful planet. And I know that that's, that's still a little taboo to, to, to mention, um, you know, a peaceful planet. But I believe that we are a generation or two away from that and that it's, it's something we're going to see in our lifetime, um, maybe sooner than later. Um, and it certainly can't hurt to, to believe that, that something like that is possible. And, um, yeah, that's what gets me out of bed in the morning. And that's what has me engaging this work. And, um, that's what has me, uh, you know, living this path of service to others. And, um, so, so grateful for the support and, um, you know, we have, I'm, I'm living in, Milwaukee, Wisconsin right now. I, I envision 2020 as being a year of being um, nomadic. Uh, it's a year to grow my my business, my coaching business. You know, I'm working uh, with my clients, helping them out with psychedelic integration coaching and, um, and life coaching. So it's been another means of, of service for me. And um, I'm, I'm earnestly seeking opportunities to, to speak at uh, psychedelic conferences and gatherings, and um, you know, am, am hopeful to do a lot of traveling. And uh, you know, I'm kind of a digital nomad; I can work from anywhere. So, uh, putting that out to the universe, and that's really what is uh, ahead here in 2020. And uh, just tied up. I was uh, out in Los Angeles for the last five months of 2019, and uh, returned to. Chicago, where I had a home that I just uh, ended up kind of uh, dotting my I's and crossing the T's, tying up the loose ends in Chicago, and now am in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, for the for the foreseeable future. And uh, it's a blessing to be back here with family and friends. And uh, this is where I grew up, so uh, you know, obviously mixed feelings about that, but um, you know, it it, it uh, kind of is what it is. And um, you know, I have my eyes on. Uh, my priorities, which are again, uh, you know, growing my my coaching business and um, continuing these high vibe conversations of of um, bringing on thought leaders and uh, people that through their personal experiences they're overcoming uh, tell the worth the fight story. And um, if y'all haven't picked up my book, uh, I'd love the support. You can find it on Amazon. And uh, you can also find it on Audible. I recorded, while I was out in California, I recorded an eight and a half hour audiobook. So if these podcasts are resonating with you, uh, surely the audiobook will resonate as well. I read 
the, the book in my own voice. It was uh, truly a labor of love to, uh, to do that as well. A very challenging, I think it took, I think it took 50 hours or so. And, um, but it uh, was definitely worthwhile. And I know the, how much these uh, motivational and inspirational programs, these self-development programs that are read by the author, how much they've impacted me and my journey. I believe that those, that, that um, audiobooks and the fact that we can listen to them at 1.25 or 1.5 uh, X, uh, which means that we can listen to, you know, an eight hour program in, in, in six to seven hours are the reason why these smart devices are smart. And uh, it's been, been such a big part of my journey is, uh, you know, and, and, and getting me up to speed and for this, uh, for this podcast and, and doing a lot of research on my guests and um, having the gift of, of uh, these um, audiobook programs that are read uh, by the authors. So um, I think that's about all I got here for y'all. Um, again, so much gratitude and love for all of y'all and, and your support along the way. And uh, we're here at episode, uh, podcast episode number 20. And, um, you know, the, uh, the um, honoring our, our Thank You Plant Medicines Day. Uh, hopefully this will be, a, a, you know, a national plant medicine day moving forward. Um, this is, there's, there's a movement that's been uh, started a few, I think a few months back. I've been, been hearing more and more of it. And I just felt called today to, to, to record a solo podcast and uh, to share in depth my personal experiences with so many different plant medicines and uh, psychedelic plant medicines and uh, ones that aren't psychoactive. But uh, I have so much reverence for these uh, plant teachers, these, um, you know, plant medicines that have impacted me on my uh, healing journey and, and life's journey in such a profound manner that I've, you know, started a gosh darn podcast to, to share these uh, important, vital conversations. Uh, there was a, uh, one more reference here. There was a, a, a podcast that i saw Rick Doblin on the Joe Rogan show. I think this was back in 2013 or 2014. And he made the reference of this psychedelic as medicine movement, um, as he, he, he compared it to the gay rights and the idea that, that 15 to 20 years ago, when, when people started speaking up, that, that that's how the change, the social change started. And that's what we need. Story is the most powerful tool that we have to destigmatize these misunderstood medicines. And without people speaking up, we can't do that. And, um, you know, it's 2020. There is such a robust amount of hopeful psychedelic science being done all over planet Earth. There's uh, celebrities that are raising their hand and speaking up about their healing and their overcoming. And uh, there's books that are being written. Michael Pollan's book, How to Change Your Mind, The New Science of Psychedelics, uh, has, you know, every 50s and, and 60s white person in, in America rethinking these um, medicines, these misunderstood medicines, uh, psychedelics as viable medicine. So we're in such a promising time. And, and um, you know, this is an invitation for anybody listening to this to uh, perhaps to share their personal stories, their personal experiences, and uh, just putting it out there. And, and that's something that um, that I did years back. And I can tell you, it was it was one of the scariest moments of my life. But after pressing send uh, and just saying, fuck it, you know, this has got to be shared. This is, this is my truth and this is the path that I want to, to walk, uh, I felt this unbelievable release of, um, of just being okay with, with whatever. Hey, this is my truth and, and y'all can take it or leave it. Um, don't really give a shit. Of course I do give a shit, but, but um, you know, just that idea that, that this is important and, um, you know, I know that I'm going to be judged for doing this, but you know what? I don't really care. People are hurting, people are dying, and these medicines can help people. So uh, with that said, there's a moral duty and obligation that I felt to share and to raise my hand and to stand and say, hey, um, this, is, this is my truth. This is where I'm at. And uh, in doing so, I, I, I received the most, um, the most incredible amount of support from my tribe and, and encouragement and, um, 
and so on. So uh, food for thought there. And um, again, thanks so much for listening to this podcast and the support on uh, the early support of the Worth the Fight podcast. I'm going to keep these keep these episodes going. And, um, you know, if this resonates and, um, you know, always feel free to reach out. I'm, I'm a resource for, uh, these, uh, experiences and, um, you know, I'm here to help out any way that I possibly can on, on your healing journey. Um, and, uh, again, so much gratitude for all of y'all much love. Peace. This has been Matt Simpson of the worth the fight podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can learn more about our mission of hope and healing at worththefightbook.org. Please rate, review, and share this episode. Please help us expand our circle of influence and get these vital conversations out to our human family. Also, if you are in a financial position to support the show, you can help us push forward these conversations with monthly donations on Patreon. This podcast is a tremendous amount of work for me, and I have stellar guests in the queue. Please help if you can. Thank you for listening to this programming. Much love, y'all. Peace.